I come across a lot of different LLM libraries and one I came across this week is called Langroid. Now what caught my eye about Langroid is that it has a way of querying tabular data like CSV files. So of course I had to give it a try. So we're going to come over and over here and open up our IPython REPL and we're going to import some modules from Langroid. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just set the cache type to fake Redis, otherwise it gives me this warning message telling me that I don't have Redis set up properly. Then we're going to configure our LLM. So we're going to be using light LLM in the background and we'll be using the Mixtral model via Alarma. I'll put the links to everything in the description. So once we've initialized that, let's just give it a quick check that it's working. So we'll ask it what is pandas in up to three bullet points and it comes back with an answer which, I mean, this looks pretty good to me. This is a pretty good three bullet summary. So now for the CSV file. So we're going to use one that I've downloaded from Kaggle's world population data set. So we're going to create a variable called data set that points to the CSV file. We'll import pandas. Then we're going to set the display of numbers by pandas to not use scientific notation. And then we're going to read that CSV file into a data frame so that we can compare the answers that the LLM comes up with with a pandas bit of code written by, by me. So let's have a look, quick look what the file looks like. So we'll just call df.columns and you can see it's got a country, it's got a code, it's got the continent that the country's part of, it's got a few different types of population, the area, the density, growth rate and the world percentage. Let's have a look at that. So we'll get just the first few rows and we'll just format it so we can see it on the screen. So you can see we've got India, China, United States, Indonesia and Pakistan. We've got the various populations and then we can see the other metadata at the end. Now we're going to have a look at how to configure Langroid so that we can query this CSV file. So we're going to import the table chat agent and its config. We'll then initialize the agent and then we're going to create what they call a task and we're going to set uh, the default human response to be, to be blank um, so that we can just use the, the task to respond to one question. And we're going to start with a reasonably simple question. So we'll say, what are the top five countries in terms of population? And then we'll ask the task to run. Uh, you can then pass in an optional variable called turns, which kind of restricts how many iterations it's going to do. Usually it will, it will exit by itself, but sometimes when I've used it, it just keeps on going forever. So I kind of find it easier just to give it uh, some sort of limit. So we'll say two. Now, the first time that you run, uh, run this, it's going to take 15, 20 seconds for uh, for Mixtral uh, to load up and then it will print the results. So in the, just for the video sake, we're going to speed that up, but just keep in mind, it's going to be a little bit slower. And so it comes back and this time it's only come back with some code. The code actually looks uh, pretty good to me, but at the moment we've got no answer. Uh, a few other times, in fact, nearly every other time apart from this time when I ran it, it was giving me a result. So let's give it another try. Uh, and you can see this time it comes back with a, a markdown table. So it says China is top, then India, United States, Indonesia, and then Pakistan. And so I suppose we didn't really tell it which year to use. So I'm going to assume it should be using 2023. So let's write our own codes. So we'll say df uh, sort values by the 2023 population and get me back the country and, and the uh, 2023 population. And so actually the answer it should be India. India should be at the top. Just It's just sneaked in there this year. And then the other ones are in the right order. And so if we put, uh, put the LLM answer back on there, we can see that it's actually, for some reason, assigned India's population to China. Let's try another question. So... Who had the biggest absolute population increase from 1970 to 2023? So hopefully we've given it a bit more guidance on what exactly it should be doing here. And so you can see it comes back with some code. I think this code looks, uh, looks, looks all right. Um, and it says the, the biggest absolute population increase is uh, from China with 754 million people. So let's write our own version of that. So this is how I would do it. I'd actually do it in a couple of steps. I'd say, okay, I'm going to have an absolute, I'm going to add in an absolute change column. We'll, do, we'll subtract 1970 from 2023, and then we'll sort by the absolute change column and get back each of the fields so that we can check the, uh, check the answer. And again, the answer is India. I'm not really entirely sure how it came up with that 774 million answer because I at least uh, on a first glance, there's no uh, combinations of things that get that give that answer. So it's not it's not got the right answer there. Let's give it one more. So well, let's try a little bit more of a tricky one. So we'll say what's the average minimum and maximum area for each continent? So we're expecting it to have to do some group by this time rather than just uh, querying the rows. And so if we look at the the code, it, the code actually looked uh, looked pretty good. Um, and at a glance, but at a glance, these answers just seem wrong, right? They're way too big. Like the area of countries can't possibly be this big. Otherwise, it would be way uh, bigger than the whole earth. So let's write the, the query ourselves. And actually, this one is adapted from an answer it gave me on a previous iteration. So we're going to group by the continent. We'll get the area and then we'll, uh, we'll, get, we'll run the aggregate function and get me the min, the mean and the max. 
Uh, and these are the answers that we come up with. Um, so these these are these are the actual answers, and we compare those to the LLM ones. You can see the the the, the, di the, dif the difference on some of the columns is just gigantic. So I'm not sure where uh, the LLM got the answer from. What I am sort of wondering is whether because I'm using something like world populations, perhaps that's somehow trained in. The, the model, like indirectly, uh, it's probably seen data about populations. And so there's a chance that it's hallucinating on those other values instead of using my CSV value. So I'm not wondering whether maybe I didn't give it a, a good chance with the data set I've, that I've chosen. But I would say like, what I, what, as I said, as we were going through, the code is good, but the results just seem to be a bit a bit dodgy. Uh, and so at the, at the, right at the moment, at least based on this example, this is actually looks like a really good tool for, for learning pandas, but I'm not sure I would necessarily hook it up uh, directly to an application at the moment. Uh, another interesting library I came across a few weeks ago is called Guidance, uh, and that one tries to constrain the output of LLM. So see this video up here uh, to learn more about that, and I'll see you in the next one.